This is what the problem sounds like. An experiment is conducted to calculate the velocity at which a cricketer can bowl a ball. Okay, so it's velocity you must get, and the cricket is throwing the ball. Now, a cricket ball of mass 0 0.5 kilogram is bowled horizontally. Cricket ball, mass, and is thrown at the ball of clay suspended by a string x. I'm going to show you the diagram now. The ball of clay has a mass of 4,5. Maybe we must look at the situation quickly instead of just uh, looking at the words. Oh, here it is. There's the cricket ball. There's the ball of clay. Position x. When the cricket ball hits the clay at x, so the cricket ball is going to move that way, hits it there, it sticks in there, and then the cricket ball, clay ball combination rises to 0 0.5 meters to point y. Okay, let me get this clear. That comes at the speed, velocity, in there, sticks to that one, becomes embedded, is the word, and then it rises to about 0.5 meters upwards. Now you must ignore air friction. But wait a minute. I think we need to, here's some key words here. Hits. That means that way hits there. Ah, do you know which principle you must involve when something collides into something else? We'll see now whether you're right. Then from there to there it rises away from the ground, away from the earth. What is happening now? Conservation of I'm not going to give the game away. Let's see whether you actually know. You must please send me some answers today if you really think you know the answers because the more you participate, the more you talk, the more you know the work. Like Sin and Jongo and Elo and Diazvel who just joined us. I would like you people to send some answers through, please. Ah, thank you, Melissa. I see that you tell us it's the conservation of momentum. And I think Melissa is from Moderdam High. Okay, Leonard, just a point. Before we just look at the question again, I want to take it easy with you today because you must understand these problems. It seems like they are going to be forever in our question papers. They've been there for the last few years. They are just changing shape every time, but they are there. It's a combination of two, I two principles, conservation of momentum and conservation of cardia, mechanical energy. That is correct. So, let us look quickly and analyze the problem before we actually make up our mind what to do first. Here we go. So we're going to analyze the problem now. And what do we see here? If this rams into that one, collides into that one, uh, the it is, someone's asking what page is it on? Page 61 in the mechanics section. Okay, here we go. It is this tennis ball into the clay ball. What would you say? Momentum or mechanical energy section? Conservation of? Of course, it's a conservation of momentum. And which formula do we use? The ball's momentum, the clay ball's momentum, and then the one is embedded in the other, sticks to the other. So we use that. You get it? Make sure you understand it. Now let's go to now. Now this rises up. Can someone please tell me which conservation we use now? This is conservation of momentum. It's quite clear which one it must be now. The conservation of mechanical energy from here to there. And this is the formula that we write. Let's quickly see what I have written here. I'm saying the mechanical energy at x is equal to the mechanical energy at y. And this is the way we write it. Mechanical energy, u plus k, at x is equal to the mechanical energy at y. Now I expand that one into that. I write the formula for that one. That means I expand it of mv squared at x. I write that one down at y. 
and I write that one down at y. So it is the gravitational potential energy at x plus the kinetic energy at x is equal to the potential energy, gravitational potential energy at y plus the kinetic energy at y. Let me look at the diagram again. So I say in this one, momentum plus momentum must be equal to the momentum afterwards when the one is within the other one. Within mean one mass with is with the other mass, and the two move together at the same velocity. That's why it's only one to be there. And if I go to this blue scenario here, it means I'm moving away from the Earth, upwards, at position, upwards. That means I'm working with mechanical energy. Mechanical energy here is the same as mechanical energy there. Therefore, that at x is equal to that at y, and this is the way I expand it. Okay, so now that we've analyzed the problem, let me just remind you again what your tools are. Here are your tools again. U is always that, K is always that, momentum is always that, and this is what you need to be able to remember which one we're going to use. I think we're going to use this one today, and I think we're going to use that one and expand it. So let us look at the questions that we have in this ball. Can I just get your attention for a minute? You would notice now that it takes a lot of concentration and focus in order to do it, but I would like to encourage you to really get into it and make sure. I've spent a lot of time going into the detail, and many of you might say, well, we know that, but I don't think that you need to rush into this because these are a good set of marks, and it's important that you actually understand when to use what. When must I use conservation of linear momentum, and when must I use the conservation of mechanical energy? Right, let's look at the questions that we have, and the book work, and I'll make comments as we go along. For the first one is, Explain in words the principle of the conservation of mechanical energy. Ah, oh, come on. We've done that before. It's in your book. I don't think, but do you know it? Do you really think that you can actually give the answer? I'm coming back to the answers much later, but I just want to ensure that you actually try. Did you find it in your book so far? Good. Make sure that you actually know where to find it in your book. Otherwise, uh, if you don't know even where to find it, how on earth can you ever really know the answer? It is on page 10 in your book. Next question. We must calculate the magnitude of the velocity of the combination at x, the combination at x. Now the question is, I'm just going to draw it on my whiteboard now for you quickly so that you can understand where we are. The combination, the velocity, of the combination at x. I wonder if you can do that. Now, let's quickly analyze the situation. Here was the bullet, no, sorry, here was the cricket ball coming into the clay ball. So this was momentum. So I'll just write here mv so that I can remember. This is momentum. Then after that, this one moved up in this, th this combination, the two combination, moved up to there. And so this is mechanical energy conservation. That's now I know. Now the question says, calculate the magnitude of the velocity of the combination at x. The m where's x again? This was x. I even write it in a different color just quickly. This was x, and that was y. Now, how do I go about it now? I simply start writing the mechanical energy conservation formula. Right, let us go, and let's do it as clearly as possible. We say, and I'm going now, that's 13.2, 13.2. Here we go. Come, can you do it with me? We say that the kinetic energy at x is equal to the kinetic energy, sorry, the mechanical energy at y. That's it. 
But now I need to expand this a little bit. I need to expand this, I need to expand this one, and that is mgh, where? At x. Plus sign, kinetic energy, half mb squared, and that half mb squared means that I need to have the velocity at x, and I square that. Is everybody with me? And that is equal to, so that's that, and I'm going to do this one again. And this one, come now, can you help me from my data sheet? MGH, and where is that? At y, the height at y, plus half mv squared at y. That's a square there, at y. So there I have expanded this one, I've expanded that one to its formula, I keep the equal sign, expanded that, and expanded that one. Now, now I think we're ready to put in some answers. Let us use another color pen. Do I know what I have? Now, where is, where is x? That is ground zero, and that is up in the air. I think it was 0 0.5 meters up, so that I need to remember. So my height at y is 0 0.5, my height here. So the height here is 0, 0 times g times m is 0. Everybody remember that? That's 0, so it's y because it's on the ground. 0 times g times m is 0, and I put the 0 down. It's important that you do. The examiner will penalize you if you don't. Can I just make this the following? Can I make that asterisk there for you to remember? You need to put down the zero. Then it's half times, half times, what's the mass again? Can anybody remember? Oh, it was five, that was right. The mass of the first one, I'm now doing, let me just double check, I'm doing the two of them together. So that means the mass was, Five kilograms, that's correct. Four comma five plus comma five. Five and the velocity, I don't know what it is because that is what I must find out. I need to find the velocity there. And that is, let's go now faster. I know MGH at Y, that means the total mass of the two was five. G is nine comma eight. And what is the height at Y? 0 0.5, 0 0.5, all right, and there goes, that is now that part, there's the M, there's the G, there's the H, and now I plus my plus sign down, and half MB squared, but when the ball got up there, what happened, what was the velocity, 0, good, velocity was 0, and therefore 0 times that plus half gives me 0. Make sure that you understand what I've done there, everybody. And now, of course, out comes the calculator. So it's 0 0.5 times 5. Oh, but I should have known that. It's 2,5. Why do I even use a calculator? 2,5 V squared at X. Naught plus 2,5 V squared at X is equal to, and I do the next one quickly. 5 times 9.8 multiplied by 0 0.5. Did I put a 0 0.5 there? Yes. And that should give me 24,5. That is right. 24,5. So that's that plus 0 gives me 24,5. And now what do I want to do? I want to get this one. So that is multiplied by 2,5. So this side, I do the reverse operation of multiplication, which is then division to get rid of that. So I can do the following if I want to. Divide by 2,5 gives me 1. That disappears. And I do the same on the other side. 24,5 over 2,5. And I think... 4.5 divided by 2.5. Our answer is 9,8. 9,8. Done. No, no, no. 
I must get V as an answer at x, not V squared. So I find the square root of that is the square root of 9,8 is the square root of that. And I do that very quickly. And I find that my answer is 3,13. That's right. Done? No, no, no. I have to put in my units. And then my answer is done. Okay. So that answers that question. I would like you to have a look at it and make sure that you can also do it. Now, just a few things I want to remind you of quickly. The first is that you would probably have noticed that I have a zero on both sides, but that's because the height of the combination H was zero on the left-hand side and V was zero on the other side. So I have, and I have to put both those zeros into my equation so that the examiner or the marker can see that I know exactly what I did. 